And we're rolling. Hey everybody, my name is Dave. I teach people how to play the saxophone. I'm located here in uh, what is normally the banana belt of Southern California. But, oh man, for the last couple of weeks or so, we've uh, been getting the rain. You might uh, have been reading that we've been in drought. Those of you who read about the weather, how interesting could that be? Yeah, well, we've been in this drought situation for, I don't know, a decade. And uh, we're beginning to think that we just don't get rain here anymore. But all of a sudden, the gods of rain said, it's, it's your turn in the barrel. So we've been getting hit with rain. I think up in the mountains, it's 60 miles from here, we're getting some snow. So it's cold today. All right. Um, today's session is going to be about when to change your read. And I want to thank Christoph. I hope I have not mispronounced your name. He's uh, one, of our, uh, one of our subscribers, and he's located in the Netherlands, and he wrote he would like to have a session all about knowing when and when you should change your read. Not how you should change your read, but when you should change. You all know how to change your read. You loosen the ligature. Good Lord. Anyway, when should you change your read? That's a great question, but it, it, uh, it begs a mindset change, all right? It, it, I, I'm going to interpret that as meaning that you're hanging on to your reads, okay? Maybe a little bit longer than they should be hung on to. And I don't blame you. Uh, my, my goodness, what are, what are reads running these days? I mean, everything went up here in America, but I think reads are uh, 4 or $5 a piece. So, yeah, you want to get the maximum use out of this. What I'm doing is a little bit different than anybody that I know, so let me explain my wacko system to you, okay? All right. Back on the tenor sax, uh, I won't go through the whole wrist, broken wrist issue and all that nonsense, but I'm using a metal light mouthpiece, uh, which is uh, uh, extremely low cost. Metal light is uh, plastic. Uh, there's also a graftonite. They're made, they're made by Rico. Uh, I like it. It's got a big baffle on the inside of it. It works. It's loud. It punches through the kinds of music, the kinds of bands that I find myself playing in, uh, blues bands. Rock bands, well, not so much rock bands anyway, but rhythm and blues, your basic rhythm and blues guy. And so, uh, let me ditch the mouthpiece cover here. What I, I keep my, my reeds in the refrigerator, and I, I've, I've fashioned this, you know, I've requisitioned a Tupperware container, and I, I've drilled some holes in it for, for just airflow, and, and I keep the reeds in, in this container with the mouthpiece as well. Why do I do that? Well, you know, have any of you had that black mold and, you know, or whatever nastiness going on your reeds? Well, then you know what I'm talking about. You feel my pain. So far, so good. The refrigerator has kept my reeds clean, my mouthpiece, you know, basically without any, you know, I, I mean, I rinse it out after I play it, but still, and you should too, but, but still, um, it's, it's kept everything, I think, you know, basically just a, a little more sanitary. My refrigerator is 35 degrees above zero. My sister lives in uh, Nebraska, where it is like uh, nine degrees below zero. Does not compute. Can't figure that one out. And she moved from here, by the way. The banana belt. Anyway, the, uh, the situation is, uh, I, I also play a read that you might not be familiar with. Uh, this is the Rico plastic cover read. I love plastic cover reads because they give me a little bit of extra resistance for the kinds of music I play. I have gone through every possible synthetic read, uh, you know, fiber cell, fibra cell, uh, Legier, uh, who makes a uh, Barry, B-A-R-I, they make a read. Uh, this is really not a synthetic read. It's a cane read. So you can see it's a, a basic cane read and it's been given this little light uh, coating of, of plastic. No, it's not flavored. It's just uh, it's just plastic. It doesn't absorb moisture the way a cane reed would absorb moisture. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit stiffer. It gives me a little bit more resistance. All right. And that's what I'm looking for because, again, once again, my, my saxophone playing is about cutting uh, through the volume that the band is putting out. Live drummer, live bass, you know, big amps and guitar with amps and all that. All that uh, nonsense. And so you're, you're probably wanting to go, what is this writing on the back of the reed? Well, what I do is I take a box of reeds and I number them, one through five, okay? And then I'll write a little note to myself. Like this one is, is particularly hard, all right? It's a little bit harder than the other reeds. 
good to hang on to for certain applications, but it's 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 perhaps maybe not the go-to read if I'm going to play uh, some I don't know musical wallpaper blues or something like that. So that's my system. I will number my reads one through five, and I'll go through them. I'll, I switch them every day. I go one on one day, and then the next day I'll play number two, the next day I'll play number three. Here's number one. And there's no other writing on it, so that means it's uh, it's pretty much universal. It's a happy read, and I like it. Uh, uh, so where were we? Yes, when to change your read. Okay, reads right out of the box. Brand new reads have... Uh, are a little bit harder to play perhaps, right? Maybe they're a little bit stiffer. They have a little resistance. That means they push back, right? The more you play it, the more that goes away. The flexion of the reed, the moistening of the reed, whatever it is causes the reed to start to wear down a little bit, right? And I believe that when I was playing clarinet, I made a clarinet reed last about six months. I mean six months, right, of playing on that thing and I think, what was it? I, I forgot. I forgot. I mean, it was a beautiful read. And and, and, and I, I, I wanted to see how long I could make it last. Did it sound good? Probably not. But, you know, it, it satisfied my need, which is to have an easy read to play. And that's what happens. You keep a read long enough, it loses that pushback ability. And it starts to blow much more easily. And then we fall in love with that read, right? because of the response and all that, and eventually the reed starts to lose its, uh, I guess it's, you know, whatever the shape of that reed, this, the shape of the sound, the, uh, the, uh, the ability to project with it, perhaps it starts to close a little bit, you know, when you blow hard or you're blowing the top tones, maybe they don't sound quite as good. So there you go. Uh, you will notice a change in your reed, in the sound of your reed, in the performance of your reed. When that happens, it's time to change up. But I've noticed, I've learned, uh, from, you know, just numbering and cycling through all of my reads uh, on a daily basis that they last a lot longer, right? Uh, they wear evenly. And I kind of got this from Walter Blanding, who was talking about, he's uh, in the Lincoln Center Orchestra. He's got a great YouTube uh, tutorial. And he was talking about how Charlie Parker really just played whatever was in the box, you know. There's a famous... Uh, 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 a bit of audio from a recording session when he comes in, you know, it's, it's toward the end of his career and things aren't going real well for him. And I think he's borrowed a saxophone and there's no read. So he has to, has to ask in the, the session, who's got a read I can borrow? Well, the Barry Sax player has a spare read. So Charlie Parker cuts the Barry Sax read down. Tape is rolling, I guess, and um, we hear all of that. And when Charlie Parker puts that Barry Sax read on, it sounds like Charlie Parker. So that, okay, well the read thing, because uh, I and you know I'm I'm gonna make this my responsibility. My sound is gonna be my sound, no matter what the the barriers are. Has it worked well? No, <laughs> yeah, no, a, a little bit better than you know I suppose because I used to. Uh, I've never bought any of those reed geeks or any of those reed tools. I know there's a lot of people that do that. They'll shave the reed down and they'll do the the whole the whole Joe Allard thing. They'll shave the reed, they'll carve the reed up, you know, and they'll get the reed geek out. Or they'll sandpaper. Good Lord, there are tutorials, endless tutorials about where to sand the center here or that. I have ruined every reed I've ever touched. So I just yank them out of the box, put a number on it, play it one through five. If one of them really sucks, you know where it goes? In the trash. That was the right answer. So when do you change the read? When it starts to lose performance, right? When it no longer does what you want it to do. And now here's the, the flip side of keeping, uh, uh, let's, say, let's say you're blowing 2.5s. Excuse me. Uh, and you've had that read on there for, oh, I don't know, a good couple of months. <laughs> Most of the summer, right? It happens. That read is not going to be a 2.5 read by the time you're done with it. It's going to be, maybe be, have the flexion of a 2, you know, about it. it's going to be a lot more flexible than a 2.5. So that when you put a proper 2.5 on to replace it, that 2.5 to you is going to feel like a 3 and it's going to blow like a piece of cardboard. Oh no, you can't have that. That's uh, in fact something that I, I've seen time and time again with students. Uh, in the at, you know, like high school students, uh, people that, uh, that that you know maybe don't play quite as much, but still play on a daily basis, and they gotta you know 
they got to perform for class. And, and you know, the, the first thing in their mind is not their saxophone. Half of them don't even take the read off for like the entire semester. Oh, God, that's a whole different subject. But what happens is once that 2, that 2.5, finally gets to the place where it's it's really making some bad you know decisions for you as a player it's it's doing more than you want it to do or less than you want it to do they take it off and put a proper 2.5 on and it's like oh god sounds so bad so rotating the reeds gets you out of that whole trap as well okay so try that buy a box of reeds get a tupperware container ask first if you're allowed to use it drill holes in it so you get some air circulation see about keeping your reeds in your refrigerator works for me that's the thing about saxophone playing everybody tells you what you should do okay i'm not doing that i'm just telling you what works for me and it might work for you it, it might not uh, perhaps you have a better system and i'd love it if you would share with us that's the beauty of this whole youtube experience here so comments below please or reach out to dave good sax at gmail.com davegoodsax at gmail.com i'm in the la mesa area southern california if you are ever ever in this area stop by we'll do we'll, we'll play some saxophone together or you can even book a lesson book lessons online too same place davegoodsax at gmail.com so i hope that answered your questions about when knowing when to change your read how about every day yeah just rotate your reads and see how that works and again you know uh, if there's a funky read in the box i don't waste time on it right i put it in the garbage now there's a difference. The last thing I'm going to say is some of you uh, play three hours a day, right? Uh, when I'm working, if, if there's a gig, I'm going to, you know, warm up for an hour and I'm going to go play for three hours, okay? Four hours on a read or two reads, that's a lot of wear and tear. Some of you might play a couple of times a week. That's much less wear and tear in a read, okay? So again, time with this baby in your mouth uh, also, you know, changes things as well. Uh, you know, the moisture, uh, the flexion, uh, the blowing, uh, and, and all that nonsense tend to break a read down. But uh, again, I don't do, use any of those tools. I don't sand, I don't cut, I don't, I, none of that. I do know people that clip. They'll clip the top of the read. And they get, I mean, I've heard amazing tone coming out of some of those players. They'll get a clipper and clip the read a little bit, you know, or clip a little bit off the, you know, and make it even stiffer. So I, 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 that's not my bag. I'm not doing any of that. I'm a gear minimalist, a gear minimalist, all right? Anyway, if you have any questions, once again, davegoodsax at gmail.com or leave comments below. Hit the subscribe button if this helps you. If, you. if there's anything that you want to know or any questions you want to ask, please reach out to me. I'm here and I'm grateful to hear from all of you. I'm so grateful that you're there. I have a better life because I get to communicate with so many awesome sax players. All right, take care. Have a great day. Have a great day wherever you're at. Stay warm. We're in the we're in the we're in the, the grips of winter here now. So, uh, we'll catch you again. Bye bye.